All right, up next, let's show you how to make this status cable. Now this will show you how to work with GST PH connectors. And what it will require is obviously some wire. You're going to want a precision screwdriver with a little SIM tip that helps with pushing these pins in. You're gonna need two of those JST PH connectors. They're keyed and these are five pin. I recommend just getting a kit because they'll have the five pins and four pins that you can use for other stuff, as well as the actual pins you need to crimp. Uh, you're also going to need wire stripper, crimper, and I recommend having a side cutter or just your trusty toenail clippers. I uh, also want to have hot air gun if you want to do the wrap uh, that we're going to do. And that should do it for most of your tools. We'll kind of go over it as we go. So first of all, uh, we're going to work with our wire. I've already pre-cut a length, so just measure how long you want it. And give yourself maybe half an inch extra. Uh, you are going to be clipping things and, and that sort of stuff, so you, know, you might want a little bit of leeway. All right, so the first thing you want to do, I like to have a dish here for when I strip wires or do whatever. And you don't need to cut a lot here because those pins are super tiny. Uh, that's actually, we need a little bit more. Let's pretend that I cut off a lot. So to do so, just position where you want to cut, squeeze it down, pull. Easy. Uh, if you're in a pinch, you don't have the appropriate wire strippers, uh, yeah, you can kind of use scissors or something like that, but those tend to cut into your wires. If you notice after you do that and you see a lot of frayed wires or cut wires, you may want to try again. Anyway, so this is definitely too long for one of these tiny, tiny little pins. I mean, these are like smaller than the size of my pinky nail. So all we need to do, take our trusty toe clippers and cut. That might even be too long, just a little bit more. So easy peasy, there we go. You notice that also collects metal fragments really nicely. So now that's about the length I want, about a mm, two millimeters or so, very short, very short. What I wanna do, I've already pulled off some of those pins, so I wanna take my crimper for it, which is actually this guy. And this, use. I'm going to use the smaller setting. And I want to make sure when I put it in, you have the V side going into the valley here. So let's get that lined up. Don't squeeze it yet, of course. Just get it in position. And one thing you definitely want to check on the other side is the little end keyhole. You want to make sure that's sticking out. It's very easy to crush. I did that more than once, so learn from my mistakes. All right. It looks like I got that lined up pretty well. Just make sure it's nice. Oh, I dropped it. Did not squeeze it quite hard enough, so we got to try again. That happens. All right. So let's get that lined up. Once again, all right. I'll give it a little bit more of a squeeze so it doesn't fall out. Once I make sure we're not gonna kill a keyhole, which would be unpleasant to say the least. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I can actually give it a little bit more room that way. All right, so the trick is, just like the quick disconnects, you'll notice on those pins, you'll have the keyhole connector at the end, as well as two sets of tabs. You probably have trouble seeing them. I'm not gonna be focused here. Well, hopefully that works. <laughs> anyway, you'll see there's the middle, very short tabs and the long back end tabs. And just like before, the long back end tabs dig into your insulation, the middle tabs close around the exposed wire. So we just wanna insert Put that in my parts dish. Oh, yeah. Make sure it's lined up there. Is it in? It looks in. You know, just a tiny bit past that tab, but not too far because you don't want to crimp around that. And then just when you're ready, give it a squeeze. Easy. Now in this case, that came out pretty good. 
I'm wrapped around just the end of the insulation there, it looks like, and I'm my middle tabs are squeezed around the bare wire. Now in the past, I have used these little guys. Um, you'll see later that they do come in handy, but by themselves, <laughs> it's a real big pain. So I definitely recommend this guy it really helps. Okay, now we have this on. Let's get ready for the next part. Okay, next up. All we want to do, as you'll notice, we have this connector with the keyhole on it. Take your JST, and you'll notice the key side is here. And we just want to insert with that keyhole side up until you feel a little click, and you should be good to go. Now, if you're using bigger cable, like 22 or higher, it's going to be tough, uh, both getting it crimped and possibly inserted. So, you might need to poke at this a little bit. Uh, just be careful, try not to, you know, crush it or anything. Once you get it in, you should be able to pull on it just slightly. These don't want to withstand a lot of force, so there you go. It should be locked in. You should be able to look at the front and see a faint hint of that keyhole through it, and you know you're set. Okay. Next, I'm gonna get the rest of these cables done, or these wires done, and then we'll uh, do the heat shrink stuff and show you how to complete that cable. All right. Okay, we're back, and we have one side done. So now is the time where we want to go ahead and do our cable wrapping, and I'm gonna be using this kind of peach gold clear stuff. Uh, it's nice because it, you can actually see some of the wires underneath. Anyway, what we want to do is you're going to need this guy, maybe some scissors, and I cut, already went ahead and used my scissors to cut off some heat shrink. And I do recommend the heat shrink that has adhesive in it. Uh, it just makes it stick a little bit better. Anyway, this one already has it, but I always take one end and just give it a little of the blowtorch. You can use a lighter, you can use a hot knife, uh, whichever works. And anyway, I want to measure just a little bit further back from there because we are going to have some heat shrink covered, but I do want to see the base pairs, the wires. And I did use white here instead of the traditional black. I know so you can post about in the comments, oh, that's not the right color code. I know it's supposed to be black. I just went ahead and used my white because I have some from that another kit and I'm just trying to use it up. Anyway, that said, then I just want to go to the other end and get a rough measure. Now, the nice thing about this expandable sleeve is you can kind of do this. So if you fudge it a little bit, well, and you probably will the first couple times, it's fine. All right, we'll cut it about mm, there. And then what we want to do is just torch this end lightly. Don't you'll, you'll notice it melt very slightly. That's all we want. We, you don't need to have it melt it into each other, and that's just a mess. Okay. So take the ends and slide them through. Now this is about I think it's a six millimeter. So it handles this pretty well. I could probably squeeze on the four millimeter I have, but uh, when I have five or more cables, this is usually what I like. So there we go, it was really easy. Now, just to show you, in case you have, um, you know, smaller tubing or whatever, and it's a little more obstinate, so you're gonna slide it on, push as far as you'll go, and then push from the bottom end, that'll cause it to bow out and then let it kind of spring on. So it works in this case too, it's just this stuff. Uh, the PVC does seem to slide on in this case a little easier. And by PVC I mean the insulation as opposed to the silicone that most of my wiring uses. All right, there we go. And then just kind of flatten it out. So there we go. And then we'll take our heat shrink tubing Put this on the other end, fit it over, and kind of position it where I want. Usually I do about half and half. So half on whoop, half on the braid, 
and half on the bare wire. And that's when we'll take out this guy, which is a little hot air gun. I don't know why, but this is just the most satisfying part of the process. Just hold it on there and be very careful, especially with shorter wires. This heat will conduct and you will start to feel it in your hands. It can burn if it's severe enough. Uh, usually it's just un uncomfortable to me. Now I like to do this until you get a nice tight fit and you might see some of the glue start to bubble out of the top a little bit. It's very faint. So that'll do. Just give that a half a minute to cool down, and you've done one end. All right. Now you just have to do the other end, and we'll do that. You do that the same exact way, except I would say before you start putting, you know, stripping the wire and doing all that stuff, just slide the other uh, piece of heat shrink down, and that way you don't go. Oh no! I put on the end cap and I didn't have that heat shrink and now I have to f somehow finagle it all over and uh, it's just a mess so don't do that okay once we finish this up we're going to show I'm going to show you how to test it out and make sure you're good to go so we'll see you back here in just a little bit all right so there we are now I did make this end a little bit more exposed wire than I would like but that's okay um, in the end I think it turned out pretty good as long as, yep, these match up. All right, so that said, how do we make sure this is going to work? Well, we just want to take out our handy dandy multimeter or continuity tester. And for this guy, I just need to dial that in. Now, on the bottom of these JST pins, you'll notice there are some exposed things, but if, if you have a probe that's small enough, you can just you know stick it through a hole, or you can take a paper clip and put it in here, whichever works. I just usually go this point and its corresponding point on the other side. So all we do, it doesn't matter which probe you use, just as long as you're testing the same one, not testing the same one. How about that? There we go. Oh, you heard that beep. It doesn't really matter what the display shows, just that you get the signal that you have continuity and that is, lets you know, okay, yep, you're gonna pass a signal between those two points. Just repeat for the other four wires here and verify that you're good to go. If not, um, I did leave a little extra wire, so if I did screw up, I could probably extract this and do what I need to. Uh, one other note, when you're doing the other side, you need want to make sure the wires are cut evenly. Uh, these were cut pretty evenly, so it's pretty good. But if you miss that, you're going to have trouble when you try and put in the pins. Like these are going to stick out every which way, and it's just going to be a, a horror show. So there you go. That said, that's all you need to do to work with JSTs. Let's talk about DuPonts next.